Hey, this is Peachy. I'm Moose. This is Sudan. And we'd like to take a moment to thank our original launch site, Anchor.fm, who's helped to enrich this podcast in many ways. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Anchor.fm offers educational tools on how to get started in social media and has not only given our show, Staple Together, several platforms to choose from for your listening enjoyment, but continues to offer helpful tips and avenues for growth along the way. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. With an easy, hassle-free method for uploading, you can add your podcast episodes to Anchor.fm's extensive library, available for listening on several popular streaming services, letting listeners choose a favorite platform. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what we're doing right now by reading this ad. Go to anchor.fm slash start to get started today. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Staple Together Podcast. I am Sudan. I'm Peachy. And I'm Moose. This is the comic book release week of October 16th. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. And we missed last week due to technical mm-hmm. difficulties. Yep. Right. We saw the Joker. We did. The review is um, in the cloud. Look up and you might see our review. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a film. I actually, I, I dug it. I think we had an average of about an yeah. eight out of ten, seven point five out of yeah. ten. No yeah, Jaro. no Jaro. Yeah. Um, yeah. On that one, but yeah. uh, we're we're not going to talk about that. Just no. like the right. Batman wedding. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move right into um, some news, and mm-hmm. the, the Peach Meister has it. Yeah. Um, some exciting news within the last few days. I think maybe just yesterday. Uh, Kevin Feige was named the head creative, or the Marvel head creative uh, executive, um, which kind of mirrors a certain position in D.C. for another uh, well-known yes. human being. A well-known human yeah. Um, he's basically uh, White Marvel Jim Lee, right? Yep, he's, yeah. yeah, White Marvel Jim Lee, exactly. Yeah. Jim Lee, of course, being the head creative consultant or executive uh, for DC. Nice. Right. But I thought that was pretty exciting. I didn't get much context behind it. I didn't actually read the article. I saw a couple of different articles on it, but um, it, that opens up a lot of creative uh, projects for him and puts him in charge of a lot of exciting uh, movies, projects, and things. Um, of course, for for Marvel. Yeah. yeah. He's really kind of held it together for him. He's kind of put Marvel on the map for their franchise, for the whole entire 10 year plus, so I, I see it doing well. You yeah. Know, it'll be interesting. This is, this is just Marvel, though. He doesn't touch DC, or doesn't touch Star Wars, I wonder. I don't um, believe so. I don't believe, yeah, I know that he, he was rumored to uh, be working on a Star Wars project. Um, but I hope it's the the Pixar Cars crossover called Tie Fighters or no. X Wings. No, no. Uh, t- Chief Creative Officer. Uh, well, that puts him overseeing film, television, animation, and publish or er, publishing for Marvel. Uh oh, means he said touch our comics. Yeah, all of them. All of them. Yeah. Yeah, well, touching my comics, Kevin Feige. Yeah. Stop touching my comics. You're crazy the page, Kevin Feige. I didn't get a chance to bag that one. <laughs> oh, you got fingerprints on the page, Kevin Feige. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's going to be an interesting future for Marvel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Who's? Yeah, I have the most important news. Oh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they started filming for... Three, two, one, let's jam. 
dude. Uh, for Cowboy Bebop, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop live action uh, TV yeah. show, right? It's a TV show, not a movie. Yeah. yeah, live action TV show. And they showed us yeah. the most important TV character. Show. The only one we need to see besides her. Ein, the corgi. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I did see that picture. I was wondering if I had seen it, but yeah, yeah that's right. The computer it's pup. We found the computer pup. He is yeah. adorable. Looks just like the party. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I am still eagerly waiting to see um, Edward, but... Yeah. Yeah, for that, sure. Her, give me a corgi any day. <laughs> He's for I'm sure. The street. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I may have to get into that. It's a pretty exciting news, and I'm, you know, I'm a fan of uh, the lead there uh, that uh, that I cannot Joe. remember. Yeah. I'm all Frank Cho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Hulk. Yeah, definitely. Or it's Amadeus Cho. Amadeus Cho, yeah. We're all wrong. Isn't it? Is it John Cho? No. No. I don't know. Cho, so look at it. My phone's on airplane. You know, the guy. Uh... Harold. Harold. <laughs> well, that's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I, you need to. F- we need to rewatch through it to the anime. Yeah, right. Because there's a really, it's really awesome anime. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, yeah. Ooze detests anime, and she has a hard time getting into anime, and she yeah. liked this one. I did. I did. And you? Did. I did. Yeah, I do <laughs> need to see it. One of the two it. animes that I like. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm excited to see it. I'm here's hoping that it lives up to the actual anime. Yeah. Um, I know that there was that uh, Death Note was kind of poorly received um, when they did that live action. Death Note, Attack on Titan, Full Metal Alchemist, Bleach. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Especially every, the Attack they're on Titan. All, they've Korean. been pretty, yeah, really, think, yeah. pretty badly panned. So it's, I'm looking forward to seeing them do it. Hmm. You know, like if they do it right. Yeah. I would like to actually see them like as the characters because they haven't shown like in costume anything yet. So yeah. hopefully we get to see that soon. And I That's hope cool. he gets skinny, but like healthily skinny. Yeah, I, yeah. I've I've Fit- heard linky. good things about yeah, you know, about his fitness for the part. So so that's that's probably a probably check that one off. I'm looking forward to it. We're all looking forward to it here. Yeah. Um. But that's... Yeah, that's my news. That's awesome. We're looking forward to that. For me, um, we're going to drop back into uh, 1989 here. Uh-oh. It's dark outside. It's cloudy. Danny Elfman music is playing in the Danny background. Elfman. Yeah. <laughs> um, Batman 89. Yeah. The, the Michael Keaton Batman is confirmed to have officially been bring, brought into the Arrowverse crossover for Crisis, meaning DC's canonizing everything. They are. They are. I heard. I heard another a small spoiler about uh, another character from that universe, but uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. We, we all need to catch up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Apparently, Robert Wool is returning as Alexander Knox. Um, yeah. He's the guy who kind of turned um, Vicky Vale onto who Bruce Wayne's real nighttime activities were. Yeah. That's kind of the reason why she found that out. And so it's kind of cool to see that they're bringing that character in. It's cool to see I haven't seen him in much of anything in recent history. So it's like, yeah. Good, good to bring that back. There's with a the slew they're joining with. Um, Burt Ward, um, yeah, well, uh, slew of cast and characters. Yeah, freaking uh, Batman, Bat- Tom Welling, was, the um, Batman, <laughs> Kevin Eastman, yeah, um, uh, Kevin Eastman, that's, Kevin Conroy. <laughs> oh, like we're bringing turtles into this. Yeah, one. <laughs> Kevin Conroy. I got turtles on the brain lately. <laughs> I guess, um, but yeah, no, Kevin Conroy, of course. It, this um, is going to be. I'm excited for this. Like, yeah. to see what they're doing, and as you said, we're we're all like substantially behind. Uh, they, they, it was really hard to keep up. Have you guys caught a glimpse of Brandon Ralph, Ralph, Ruth, Ralph, in his? Yes. In his suit. Yeah, I follow pretty him cool. on Instagram. So. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. He got fit, man. Uh, he, he, he's fast. a big dude. Like I knew he, got, he was tall, but yeah, he got he got he bulky. buffed up. And yeah, Zachary he, Levi put some bulk on. Padded, padded suits. No, 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 I haven't seen the suit. So. It's all man. No, <laughs> brothers. <laughs> Explicit content right now. This has got 
an adult. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I have for my news today. Nice. Uh, so let's go ahead and move ourselves into the review segment of this day, uh, this episode, this event. Mm-hmm. Peachy, what do you got for us? Well, I had three little books today. Um, I did have a bit of a tough time uh, deciding between two for my pick of the week, but let's go ahead and start first with uh, Spider-Man number two, written by J.J. Abrams and Son Henry, uh, featuring art by Sarah Pacelli. The cover on the issue I picked up was by Oliver Koipel. Um, the book was pretty good. It was it, it the story picked up a bit um, from the first issue. I mean, in the first issue kind of kept me reeled in to see what was going to happen next, whatever. Mm-hmm. And this one kind of turned it up a little bit. Had another ending, a cliffhanger ending that was like, okay, um, I need to get the next issue. So, I mean, good job there, guys. Sarah Pacelli does an awesome job. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a great artist. I, I love the way she draws uh, Peter Parker, you know, an older, grizzled Peter Parker in this book um it's pretty awesome i gave that book a seven um seven out of ten um i think my last last time i read it i gave it something like a five or a six yeah. or something like that but uh yeah it's definitely picking up so that's that's a good book to pick up uh, just being in you know the second issue there um yeah, i was been you know hovering if i want to actually pick that up or if i want to put that one back because i got the first one didn't read it <laughs> yeah and i I read it, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, it was a lot of action, not a whole lot of word, but, you know, this one makes up for it, for sure. Um, The two I had trouble deciding uh, between for my pick of the week were Absolute Carnage and X-Men number one. Um, Absolute Carnage, did you, did you get a chance to read that suit on? I did. That's, it was a great book. It was a good book. Yeah, it was. I mean, that story's not terrible. It's get it's it's getting pretty good. Um, we we had some awesome stuff happen with Hulk at the end of last one, and and this story saw a few cool events happen. Um, Miles Morales saved stuff like that. Whatever. Um, Absolute Carnage, written of course by Donny Cates, featuring inside and cover art for the issue I picked up. The uh, issue A, uh, Ryan Stegman did both of those. Um, I gave this one an 8.5. Nice. nice. It's a good, solid story. I'm digging where it's going. Um, but my pick of the week was, of course, X-Men Volume 4, number 1. Uh, I gave this one a number 9. It's written by Jonathan Hay. Number 1 and or number 9? I gave this one a number 9. I don't know what that is. Or number 9? Yeah, 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 two, <laughs> two cheeseburgers, two fries, and a coke. There. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, that's how you ruin your comics. <laughs> You're all eating. You have a cheeseburger and fries. You look hungry. <laughs> a little fit for you. A little yeah. malnourished. 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 Oh, there was, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you stepped in to help. That that although feeding the hunger is important. I think you probably should have gone for the number twelve instead. Yeah, I was, it just has some salad in there. I was thinking about along the lines of uh, you know, a bathroom trip. You go number one or number two. I'm going number two. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't want to know. Don't answer that. Yeah. Just. <laughs> I won't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep going here. <laughs> Written by Jonathan Hickman, inside and cover art uh, on this one. Lionel Francis, you great artist, um, outstanding job. I, I guess he's a regular, regularly an artist for like uh, Captain America and oh. a couple other um, really cool books. Awesome art. Um, this book. Uh, it's an, I, I'm, I didn't read any of the House of Ten. I didn't read uh, Powers of X. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Correct. <laughs> um, so I was kinda, I'm kind of thrown into this new 
this new situation that the X-Men are in, which is pretty great. They're loving life. Things are pretty good. Um, but there's a war going on between the humans and, and the mutants. And oh, mutants are just, you know, trying to live in peace. And humans are just trying to figure out how to destroy the mutants kind of situation. Um, Scott uh, Summers, uh, Cyclops are of course, has picked a key group of, of mutants mm -hmm. uh, to come and live in this paradise with him and whatever, and also, you know, fight if need be. Um, Magneto's in the group. It's crazy. They, I... they're, they're like, they rescued a bunch of children that they started, like, you know, checking over and fostering, and they're all crazy about Magneto. They're like, oh, Magneto, Magneto. He's got a crazy white costume um, like he did in uh, the issue one of the Powers in House. Yeah. Is that what, no? I'm I'm thinking of the uh, uh, that big event over the um, Secret Wars two. Ah. Yeah. That's the one that like tore all the realities apart and then stuck them back together or something. Um, Another series I have not finished reading. I I apologize. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's a, it was a good book. It's a good team they put together. I've, uh, Wolverine's on there, Havoc's on there. Um, the mutants are winning. Good. Yeah, I guess, from what, from what I've gathered. Um, but, yeah, I dug it. Um, I, I wasn't sure. It, I'm, I'm new to the X-Men books. I've collected them before, but uh, I haven't read very many. I'm not, you know... Uh, too aware of how the stories go or anything, but I was I wasn't too sure I'd like it. Whatever, right. there was a lot of uh, happening. There was a lot of stuff <laughs> happening, and you know, back and forth and whatever. But it was a book I was able to imagine voices to and stuff like that, which I love. You know, you get sucked into the story, and you this guy talks like this, and that guy talks like right. that, and oh, that's who this is, and you know, you it which which also happened for me with Carnage. Um, which is why I also voted that one up. What but, prompted you to pick this book up? What what got you ex interested in it? Well, <laughs> no, um, yeah, shameless plug. I'm going to plug uh, Peachy's Playhouse coming to YouTube soon. I review toys and action figures. Um, lately, Marvel Legends has been putting out some pretty awesome X-Men figures, X-Force, uh, figures and stuff like that, some awesome Wolverine guy, you know, figures and whatnot. Um, and, I, and I've been, you know, I've been digging all of them, so I've been picking them up at random here and there, and I'm like, you know what, I don't know a whole lot about the X-Men. I'm a you know, lifelong Marvel fan. I, you know, lifelong Wolverine fan. I've pl read plenty of uh, Wolverine solo comics and stuff like that, whatever, but never really X-Men. So I'm like, screw it, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it and if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't, but yeah. I'm digging it. I'm, uh, you know, even knowing as little as I do about what's going on in the story, it was pretty awesome. Nice. Hear, hear, folks, see, you don't need to have read all the story, you just yeah. need to pick up a book and start reading. Yeah. that's the beauty about comics. Yeah. For sure, it's issue number to, one. Man, you know, issue number one. You know, best thing to do is pick up the number one, pick up the number five, number six. Usually, this is the, they only have five to ten issue story arcs in some yeah. situations, so it's yeah. good to kind of pick those up. Well, that's yeah. awesome. For sure. Nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What Oops. did you have? Oh, yeah, so <laughs> many books, always. Uh, yeah. All the time. I feel like that's a weekly happening. Y yeah, it <laughs> seems to be. Well, I was um, going to mention that like, Peachy kind of had a record this week. Yeah, three. three. That's yeah, a lot. three books. Yeah, I actually picked up six. Oh, yeah, six, yeah. Oh, wow, you know, almost broke the twenty dollar mark. Oh, is that then? No, because I picked up three dollar books. Right. <laughs> um. So it's basically like you bought four books. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, books that I had this week were the marked number one, uh, which is an image and something. Doesn't say it because it's on the back. I was wondering Image if and Shadowline book. Hmm. I don't know what Shadowline is, but number one. Um, 
writing, or it was created by David Hine and Brian Hamberlin, writing by both of them, and art by Brian Hamberlin, and the art was Gerard Van Dyke. I wasn't a huge fan of the art, because it looks like that, um... You know, Candy like, Sugar Schools? No, okay. I would have liked it if it was more like how the cover is. Um, oh. But it was more like computer generated, trying to be 3D, but still 2D art, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I re there was a book that was actually put out like that a while back. It was uh, Spider Man. Like quality series. of Life? Qu yeah, yeah, Quality of Life. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah it's like a. A now version of that yeah. art, basically. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Which, it's like a really bad video like, game. Basically, and like all of the background is still 2D. Like they didn't try to make that 3D. It's just the people are 3D. Yeah. Did not huh. like it. The story is pretty cool. It's about people who get tattoos, and the tattoos are uh, magical. But yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. To Magic's defend against not real. evil. Just disclaimer. Yeah. Um. I also had Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons Enter the Painscape number two. I got, or it's continued writing by Jim Zub and art by Troy Little. The color was Leonardo Ito, and I got both the uh, Troy Little cover, the main cover, and also the character sheet cover, um, which is also Troy Little and Jim Zub. Uh, but the main cover has, is a f around like the. the Go around. What is that called? A wrap around. Wrap around. Yeah. Cover. Oh, that's that's the cool. Tomb of Horrors on it. That's cool. Um, yeah. and you know, crazy stuff happening. And then the character sheet cover obviously is a character sheet. Um, this series they're doing only Rick's characters that he's had. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, which this is the Wizard Fighter Rick, hmm. and um, yeah. I that's the one I remember from from the story, from your other dungeon story, I think. I think. No. No? No. Um, wow. I also had wow. four, number, <laughs> <laughs> number two, continued writing by Scott Lobdale, art by Brett Booth, and I got the Lee Inyuk cover. Hmm. Which is a really good cover, and I hate it. Yeah, um, it's awesome. I'm going to mention this again. That That is a name that you can only properly say by making a, a, doing a goofy impression. A nyuk. Yuk. Um, it was pretty good. Uh, last time... Um, Last time we recorded, I was like, when were they visit? what book were they just visiting President Superman on Earth 2? It was this book, which is no. why you had no idea what I was talking about, Sudan. Uh. You didn't read this book. <laughs> so, yeah. But, pres yeah, I'll, I'll get to the... Justice League, number 34, continued writing by Scott Snyder, art by... James Tinney in the Fourth. And James Tinney in the Fourth. And art by Bruno Redondo and Howard Porter. And of course, colors by Hi Fi. And um, cover by Francis Manifold. Always good. Always good. Yeah. Um, always confusing cover wise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's always Martian Manhunter and, or Aquaman. For some which reason. Aquaman should be on it, and Martian Manhunter shouldn't be on it, but it's the <laughs> other way around right now, right. because Aquaman's back, and Mar Martian Manhunter's gone. See, so what's going to happen is um, Lex is going to absorb uh, Aquaman. And oh, and then pop back out. <laughs> Manhunter, and then we're going to be confused again, yeah. because they're going to have Aquaman on the cover, and right. Manhunter's going to be disappeared. Right, but the cover that you got for this, I'm sure you'll talk about it in a second, because we shared the it has, cyborg it has Cyborg on it, who has been gone for, for everything from like issue five, at least. As far as I know, he's not even in Odyssey. I don't know. But yeah, what I don't know what's going on with so. that. Um, but yeah, that that book happened. Um, a, it was actually a really fast read, which hasn't been the case for um, Justice yeah. League for me recently. It, it, yeah, it seems like the stories like are extensive. Like just even the summaries. Yeah, it's like holy shit. There's so much going Sorry. on all the time. 
But this was very action-packed, and it was like a straight continuing from the last book mm. into this book, so it just it felt a lot faster than it was before. Um, also had Nightwing number 65, continued writing by J Dan Jurgens, um, art by Rowan Cliquet, and Nick Flaherty on colors, and I got the Deceased variant cover by Warren Lau. It's an awesome cover. It, it's pretty great. Um... Things happened in this book. Oh, really? Yeah, because, you know, he's still fighting Talon, but he doesn't know oh, right. who Talon is. Right. And, uh, yeah. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Pushing the teeth. Yeah. So my pick of the week is Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons and Enter the Painscape number two. Nice. Because, you know, it, it's just a good book. It's just a good book every time I read it, and I hate it <laughs> real, real bad. Because I want to talk about other books because some the stuff happened in Nightwing, man. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about it though. It's fine. Um, See that because like Artemis and them are back, that's right? Red Hood. Yeah. Never Which mind. Is next week. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, Sudan pays attention. <laughs> I'm sorry, just because the end of that book, Justice League, kind of threw me off on that. Right. There, there's a singular yeah. solitary panel that I'm like, yeah, what second? Everything's confusing. Uh, so Rick and Morty versus Dungeon Dragons Enter the Painscape. Um, awesome art, as always. It's just, it's it's like watching an episode of, of Rick and Morty. There was lots of references, always. There's nice. like... <laughs> Okay, gotta make the dexterity check. Make a stealth check. Miss didn't make the stealth check, and then it was just great. It was good. It was good. It was perfect. And um, yeah, that's basically it. That was. Oh really? I mean, there's not more to like. Okay, so we'll, there's not Morty. <laughs> so Rick in the last issue got sent into the Tomb of Horrors, which is right. supposed to be like one of the hardest um, mods. Mods in. Yeah. In Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which I mean, I mostly know about because of Ready Player One the ah. book, because it wasn't even mentioned in the movie, but that's fine. Um, but they made a movie? No, no, <laughs> they didn't. No, they did not. Uh, but it's basically it starts off with Rick making his first character the first time he tries to play D&D &D, and he wants to be a bard because that's like the highest class that they can do and the DM's like okay well if you make all of these roles then you can totally be a bard and then he doesn't and huh. he has to scrap his bard and he, he just starts over um, and then you know building more characters and Rick and or no Morty and Summer were kidnapped by the characters that he had made so they escape. <laughs> and, um... Oh, like his bard and all that came up? Or was that yeah. one the only one? He is... There, there's a bard, a barbarian, and a sorcerer that kidnapped Morty and Summer. <laughs> um, and all that stuff. But while Rick is in the Tomb of Horrors, he's like, oh yeah, there's a secret here, there's a secret here. I remember every single detail, which is brought me back more, even more to Ready Player One, because he has, like, the entire thing memorized. It's right. Point. Um, but he makes friends with the demi Lynch Acerac, uh. instead <laughs> of, like, fighting him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and he's, he's like, okay, blah, 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 can you just send me back to where I came from instead of sending me back to the beginning of this and he's like, oh yeah, totally, and sends them back to the fake town where they were in in the last issue. Classic and Scott versus Nega Scott situation. <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, more, or Rick tries to make a portal gun, but he specifically said that there isn't going to be any science fiction in his fantasy world so when he makes the portal gun it doesn't work ah. and um, uh, he's like I'm going to just have to get out of here the normal way which I don't know what it is because it just um, kind of ends for him and then it goes back to the normal world where Morty and Summer are like freaking out because 
the bard and the sorcerer are like doing a ritual <gasps> and bringing all of these demons out into the real world and stuff oh. and um they're calling the police and the, um it kind of just ends with uh with uh with a this that's a dog that's a goat um just like a bunch of monsters oh. attacking oh classic uh Thank angel you. last episode yeah 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 <laughs> for sure interesting so I'm, I'm excited for for the unearthed Rikana, which is the next uh, issue. Cause it's, uh, I'm disappointed in Rick. Nice. You, know, you could still create a portal gun using magic. But materials. he wasn't. You, he wasn't making it out of magic stuff because oh, he had it. He was it. out of science stuff. You so he, that's what he's going to have to do. I, I assume in the next issue is make it out of magic stuff. Oh, like, come on, Rick! Come on. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's. Um, I was going to ask you about Marked, because I saw that in the book, in the mm -hmm. previews. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is, you said the art is just not up to standard? It's, is it's fine, it's just when the, there's parts where the person is, like, in front of the background, and it just doesn't look good, I'll, I'll open it, it's fine. It's just not like it's sealed or anything. That just, one intrigued me just because of the story content right. on it. And that's oh. why I got it. And it's, like, it's a big book, too. It's, um... Hold on. And there's parts where the art is good. But it's 40 pages. Oh, dang. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'll find not good art really quick. Sorry, I don't mean to bring it back. No, down. you're fine. Task. You just kind of jumped really quickly to the next book. <laughs> Um, so, like, this is good art. These first two pages, which is what's in the preview. Oh, okay, right. Okay, yeah. And I like that art, but let me try and... But I can already example. see them having converted this over to a stop-motion book, you know, one of those, um, motion comics that they've been releasing as of late. Right. Not, not a huge fan, but not a huge anti-person on that. Like, I feel like specifically, like, this... This page is not... It just looks weird. Hmm. Yeah, that did, yeah. It looks like... It looks almost as if the maybe used realistic backgrounds and that, drew, yeah. drew the characters and stuff in. Yeah, maybe. That's or what it is. It maybe they took a, one of those apps and oh, colored yeah. the background, like changed yes. it up. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, the parts where they're actually using their magic is is what I like. Which was one part that they showed in the previews mags, which was like, oh, that looks interesting. Yeah. Uh, they show them using the magic, and it was like, oh, that's not terrible. But seeing that, I'm like, ah, I'll wait till they do a humble bundle on that series. Yeah. Because, right. Yeah. And, like, I, I really like the covers that they've been showing that they're going to be putting out. So I was hoping the art would be closer to that, and it's just, eh. But I'll get the second book, and if if the story still interests me and I can stand the art, I'll, I'll keep getting You're it. You're giving it the right. three-issue try. Uh, the two-issue try, really. Yeah, it's, it, like, for me, it's issue to issue. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay. Issue but, yeah. to issue. I, I, I live from good moment to good moment. I try not to live issue to issue. No, <laughs> That's stupid. That's stupid. She'll get over it. Uh, um, Alright, well, I guess that leaves my review. Yeah, so, sure. So there were three books. They were all great. End of day. Nah. Wouldn't that be amazing? No. Ah! This, the comics are straying from their deviated path. Wait, just, what? Just, the first book was straight. Does that, does that mean that they're on their original book? <laughs> right? They've strayed from their deviated path. <laughs> well, they're going this way, then they started going this way, so yeah. But that would mean that the path that they were on was deviated the originally. First, they were settled, and then they deviated this way, and then they deviated this way. <laughs> they deviated from their deviation? Yeah. And then this... Is consumptionary. 
Deviate. You're using a deviate. whole lot of words that I don't think you know what they mean. <laughs> I know I was using them just to use them. Exists. Right. Um, go ahead and start with stray number three. Straight, that's right. Cats I forgot you were getting that one. Space. Right. Um, written by Carlos C- Cafoni, <laughs> Juan Do, and Juan Do did the oh. art, the coloring, and the cover art. And oh, wow. Coloring too. Um, go Juan Do. Very quick, very predictable. Um, oh. I mean, still pretty decent art, but oh, like, okay. eh, eh, six out of ten on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Just, yep, cat found out. Oh, cat bad guy. Cat's a bad guy? Inadvertently, because it's oh. helping the people find planets to conquer. Oh. Is that one you're going to keep up with? Or it's only people? probably one or two more issues, so I'll probably just finish it. See how, oh, right. it, how okay. they get through the drama that is like, oh, saw that coming. Right. Yeah. That's too bad. It's so predictable. Yeah. It's unfortunate on it. Um. Then I had Absolute Carnage Scream number three. Nice. Came out today. The final part of the story. Um. I got written by John Carpenter. Oh wait, no, that was last week's. Yeah. Um. Cullen Bunn. Art by Gerardo Sandoval, uh, colorist by Eric Arson. Don't let me say that again. Um, cover was John Dell and Mary Hallowell. It's a connecting cover. I have gotten all three. Nice. And did um, you say Eric Arsony? I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of words in there that I might say inappropriately and get in trouble with. Uh, I- I feel like I don't want to get in trouble with because I love everyone. Um, but that one, this one's got a the continuation of the Scream storyline within the uh, Absolute Carnage. Uh, it was good. Um, we you know see a conclusion of that particular character story arc and the beginning of a new one. And it leads into the current, uh, the new ongoing series that's going to be starting soon, Scream. So when when does that start? Do you know, next month, I think. Okay. Well, I'm, I might have think to or December. I think it might be either next month or December. I'm okay. always off by a month on some of these. Um, but it, I haven't decided if I want to collect it. Um, but I mean, it's interesting to see what they're going to do with the character because she's also a new person. Oh. So. We'll see. Um, that one, 7 out of 10. Um, continuing, I have so got... You know, it's unfortunate that this kind of got knocked down to where it was. Uh, Tales from the Dark Multiverse. Oh, yeah. Batman the Nightfall. Uh, telling the story of when Batman broke his back. Um... Right. These are interesting. They're building up, kind of filling a multi. That was out also today. Yes. yes. Oh, I didn't see that one. I, I grabbed the uh, the Bane one. The dollar. Oh, one. the dollar one. Yeah, yeah, which kind of was like the facsimile they were comparing it with. Um, this one tells the story of af- thirty years after Nightfall occurred. Um, they're setting up, feeling a multiversity vibe from this. Like, they're setting up something that's going to have probably intertwined. Written by Scott Snyder and uh-huh. Kyle Higgins. Um, art by Javier Fernandez, which is great. The art is just phenomenal yeah. for this entire book. Um, Alex's G word, Agui Marcius, I got nothing. I can't say his name. It's just a really long. Okay. Um, and it's got a line over one of the letters. So, um, I got the variant, or I got the cover. Um, why did I say VC? Oh, I dyslexic my words. I said VC instead of CV cover. Ah. Um, Lee Weeks and Brad Anderson did the cover here. Um, That's a pretty cool. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I like it. It's it was good. Uh, it was kind of like oh, but what if you know Azrael had actually killed Batman or? defeated Batman and when Batman tried to take the mantle back after he broke you right. know, Azrael the whole Nightfall situation and um, we find out Bruce is still alive 30 years later just 
a head and a torso, and he's been oh, slowly wow. been like amputating its legs off and arms off and stuff, and uh, forced to watch his city run by Azrael, the Saint Batman. Um, hmm. And then the, the, we're seeing like the way I see his multiverse is we're seeing it's like this one character, kind of a watcher, anti monitor level kind mm-hmm. of character that's like trying to find heroes within this dark multiverse for some upcoming conflict. Right. And being a dark multiverse, it's all, all our great heroes have gone to the dark side, you know. Right. And it was cool to see that, you know, even though Bruce Wayne was still alive, Bane's son comes and saves him. Oh. Uh, what was the deal with the amputations? Is he just going crazy? Just to turn him. Just to punish Batman. Just to punish Bruce Wayne. Because oh, okay. Bruce Wayne didn't let him keep the mantle and wouldn't follow in his footsteps. I see. Okay. Um, but ended up still converting him and Batman still goes wrong after they defeat Azrael. So it's a self-contained story, but also we're seeing some like how these characters end up going wrong. And it's cool. It's the repercussions of previous stories... Very much yeah. so. Uh, it garnered an 8 out of 10, but since there's no Jaro, it was a 7.5, which is what dropped it down. Oh, wow. It's still a that. good story, but it dropped it down pretty significantly. Uh, next book I got on my list is shared with Ooze, the Justice League 30s 4s. Yeah. Snyder and Tinian, uh, Redondo and Porter, High Five. Hmm. Uh, and I got the Francisco Francisco Matina cover, which is super cool. It's good oh, art. I like it a lot. It doesn't make I, I sense. It. Well, yeah, it's a, that's got to be a connecting or a no. wraparound. No. No? Nope. It's Neither, just, huh? It's just there. Yep. I like it oh, my God. Let me see the, yeah. Yeah, let me see the back of that one. It goes <laughs> into the void. Yeah. But, oh, uh, no, it's, it's a cool cover. Um... The continuing story has just been really interesting. Um, of course, Hot, hot Girl pulling uh, um, Star Lord, yeah, and screwing everything messing up. everything up. Oh, yeah. Um, I told you, I told you that they watched these movies and made the story out of it. But DC, you did, I, told I do you. remember you saying that. I, I remember hearing that. Uh, a lot of lot of stuff kind of going like, oh, yep, that was what I was expecting, but cool, I was seeing the Starman and all that stuff, yeah. and um, there was a Jaro. I didn't do yeah. it. <laughs> there's, there's this big graffiti in the sky. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Hey, <laughs> Dad. Uh, this hey, one was Jaro. an eight. Um, I got an eight out of ten on this one, but it, with a Jaro being present, it's an 8.5 nice. out of ten. Nice. Um... Good book, good story. I, I like the moment where Green Lantern had his like his say, and the other Green Lantern or our man Lantern, uh, yeah. the old Green Lantern says it looks like the Green Lantern names in good hands. Yeah, which is, that's awesome. Like that old timey, like that that feels good to. And he's kind of like, like I like your that. dad saying he loves you. Yeah, <laughs> it was super cool. Barry asked if anyone thought he could pull off Vandal Savage hair. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying. Oh, uh, very no. I also picked up this week X Men number one. Didn't get didn't read it because I have not gotten through Howard House of Power is our house. House of ten of X ten X. Um, I'll still need number two, so I'm hoping to read those pretty soon. But it's I got the Art Germ um, Jean Grey cover, and I said this to Ooze last night at the bookstore. Um, I think it's actually one of the first times I actually liked Jean Grey. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's a really cool cover. It is just, a cool cover, yeah. But I'm not, I, I just like his style, but it yeah. also, the uniform is in, like, I can actually see somebody actually in that uniform being a mutant. Yeah. That was a pretty cool uh, Power Rangers cover. Or Power Rangers. What the hell, man? There was a pretty cool Magneto cover. Oh. Uh, but, like, Partial black and white, kind of you know, with a little bit of color, bleeding in, smoking in, kind of ish. It was pretty cool. I don't know. I should have grabbed it, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, I was our girl. I wish there was a Scotty Young, but uh, I would have gotten that. I also picked up Metal Men number one. Oh. I I, I did it. It was kind of like a um, inside guy? joke. Oh with somebody else, but uh, I didn't get a chance to read it. Um, time got away. Uh, but my pick of the week well, is I'm going sorry. to... Who does Metal Men, the, the publisher? DC. DC. It's a DC. Okay. 
Okay. The I'm DC good. Universe comic. Um, oh, okay. But my pick of the week is um, Absolute Carnage number four. Nice. Um, I really dug the heck out of this book. Continue writing by Donny Cates. Ryan Stegman is the artist. Uh, Frank Mars- Martin's the colorist, and the Ryan Stegman is the the cover that I picked up. I sp- yeah, got I, another one that was pretty good, but I specifically wanted the yeah the, the blood soaked cover. Yeah, I really dig that one. Um, I really like the is is, is uh, ever so presently touted by me and <laughs> uh, begrudgingly agreed on by everyone else that I do like the re- villain redeems, and we're seeing this being a very Brock Venom redemption story yeah. being played out. Um, I really dug the whole seeing him going from classically being this weak, you know, snivelly character to being this really tough character. From my point of view. From right, my point okay. Of view. Um, it was cool to see. Um, and I, I really like the art. It just continued to be wonderful. Um, yeah. I like the moments he's having with Peter. I like the moments he's having with, you know, himself and his kid and all that stuff. And that... The, the, the the Avengers coming in that part was yeah pretty cool. that was awesome yeah that the, the, caps like we got this <laughs> yeah here's Venom you know this antihero that's never really kind of looked at by anybody as like a good guy and he's holding his own well to protect these heroes saves Spider Man uh, or saves uh, Miles. Miles Morales. That was really cool how he did, did that, and Miles looked really awesome. All Venom or Carnage eyes. It yeah, was it was pretty cool. And the, it's it's cool to see this stuff come up. So I'm, I'm having a good time with it. That one got myself got itself a nine out of ten. Oh, awesome. So I'm curious to see how they're going to conclude the storyline. Um, um, but yeah, that nice. was my pick of the week. Yeah, it was a great story. I mean, so far it, it's got. Two more books left to finish out uh, this uh, story arc. One more book after this. Uh, I it's thought a five we, part. It, oh, I thought it was a six part. It might be. Right. It's, it's, I think one more, but I'll probably classically wrong. Marvel likes to surprise us with weird numbered. Uh, true that. You know, like we're, it's going to be eight books. No, wait, 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 wait. wait. We're going to be nine books. We, we 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 forgot to put a line in there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it for us this week. Um, Eagle. Yeah. What? <laughs> I forgot what you mentioned we had to say. So we are We're going recording. to be taking a, a quick break next week. Um, we're moving into the holiday seasons, uh, which is really busy for a lot of us. We have a lot of scheduling issues, and it's just better for us to kind of take it easier for that. So we're probably going to go on a slight hiatus. But next week, no recording, but the week after we're returning for a special Halloween episode. Oh. And you may hear us come back for More something like, like a Halloween, or maybe a Thanksgiving or a pre-Christmas episode after yeah. that. We'll let you know. Yeah. But it's, it's going to be Christmas is on a Wednesday this year. Christmas oh. is on a Wednesday this year. Sure so. It's not going to be open. I don't know why we're trying to... I wonder. I wonder if they'll have a <laughs> midnight release of any sort. Midnight release is like, yeah, that That'd would be cool. Ho ho ho! But no, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure hold, that out. Hold slots. <laughs> Pick up your ho ho hold slots. Ah, yeah, uh, that was percent off. I'll take that. Yeah. Thank you. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. All sees. Twenty um, percent off of books. Ten percent off of supplies. That'd be cool. Yeah. That's the hold slot discount. Yeah. yeah. It'd be cool if they did ten percent more that time. Right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Peachy, you got a message for everyone? Um, pick there's no <laughs> substitution. <laughs> <laughs> there's no substitution. Pick these books up, guys. Uh, there's really, I mean, personally, no substitution for for the real thing. I don't even read my actual uh, hard copies. I read my digitals that awesomely come with Marvel Comics. For the um, most part, yeah, that's yeah. like the r- big part of that I love about it. I wish DC yeah. would get on board, but... Yeah, but I still, I mean, yeah, I, you can't... There's no surpassing the real thing in having that awesome cover or, you know, that awesome issue that you really enjoyed or 
got into. From, yeah. being, from reading these books to collectible. You know, just the collectability. Like, a lot of us are here like, oh, I have that issue. Like, we get surprised with announces of certain characters and stuff being in things. We're like, ah! So yeah. that's cool. It's, it's a lot of fun to have them. Oh, uh, for sure. If you don't know where your local comic book shop is, try comicshoplocator.com to figure that out. And uh, they also show you what books are out the week you're looking for. Not a paid ad. Um, I do have a quote. Nice. One second. That is not the end of okay. all of the staple together goodness. Oh, we don't yeah. end here. Check us out on our social media. That social works. media. We got Instagram going. There's all three of us are on there. Yep. We yeah. also have YouTube. We're putting this up there too. We also on Facebook and Twitter. Follow us on all those platforms. Talk to us. Follow us. See what we like. Tell us what you like. Um, yep. Tell us what comics. You, if there's anything coming out in the next couple of years, let us know couple years <laughs> a couple of weeks or so that, let us know what you want us. want us to read and stuff like that if there's movies you'd like to score reviews games yeah. you'd like to play yeah. um also Pop culture man yep to get and check out suit on segment we're got suit on segment on youtube <laughs> I, I i do have that one is definitely check that out we got pt's playhouse um yep. coming here in the near future yep. check that out soon to play yeah. Pokemon related content on my channel suit on segment um, and we got action figure content to, on that one and potential from ooze coming eventually yeah eventually thing. I'm excited about a, a project ooze has been talking about <laughs> I've talked about yeah as, as oh, I'm sorry that suit on has been You're talking right. about that ooze is doing <laughs> right well, <laughs> we're excited. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be interesting to do that. We're, we're, there's, it doesn't stop here. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Keep it going. We're going to go ahead and sign off for this one. Ooze, you've got a quote for us this week. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, you are always free to change your mind and choose a different future or a different past. That is Richard Bach. Thanks. It just makes me think of the Flash. Yeah, uh, or or doing a new project on YouTube with your buddies. I guess that, that too. That's, but that's a good one. Uh, but that's it for all of us here at the Staple Together Party. Here, um, thank you for listening. We'll have you listening on the next one. Ha, I told your thing. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's only taken an entire year for you guys to start saying it. Like this, this is the sign off of the first fifty-two issues of this universe. Yeah. Um. We'll probably be going into the dark universe for the next 52. You'll, you'll have us hosting a Halloween episode on our yeah. next Hoot Nanny. <laughs> the season of the witch. Witch. Bye! Bye! Bye. <laughs> no, I, I was, sorry. I sprung that on you. I'm going to start doing that. Like, you have your... There's no holding on to this. No, no substitute.